witch hazel. You see it next to the out of stock rubbing alcohol and peroxide every time you go into that section of your local pharmacy. You wonder, should I just grab some witch hazel to sanitize my hands? Will it even work? What in the world is witch hazel? Why is this mysterious elixir called witch hazel in the first place? Let's learn what witch hazel is, all of its amazing properties, and everything that it's not. Coming up next, you won't want to miss it. Witch hazels are a genus of flowering plants in the family Hamelidaceae Aceae, with three species in North America and one each in Japan and China. The North American species are occasionally called winter bloom. If you're anything like me, the first thing you think of when you hear the word witch hazel is double double toil and trouble. And then you start conjuring up images from all those creepy green witches from the movies that you used to watch when you were a child. However, what we should be thinking of is how witch hazel works. Witch hazel contains chemicals called tannins. When applied directly to the skin, witch hazel can help reduce swelling, help repair broken skin, and fight bacteria. Kinda. Okay, okay. <laughs> Enough beating around the bush. Let's jump into the benefits of using witch hazel, things that it's possibly ineffective for, how to use witch hazel, and how it differs from rubbing alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. And before we wrap things up, I'll answer some of the most common questions that I've gotten over the years about witch hazel. Let's start with the benefits of using witch hazel. Number one, witch hazel relieves inflammation. Witch hazel contains many compounds with anti-inflammatory properties, which may have far-reaching benefits for your health. Number two, witch hazel helps with skin irritation. Applying witch hazel cream seems to relieve mild skin irritation, but not as well as prescription steroid creams like hydrocortisone. Number three, witch hazel helps with hemorrhoids. Applying witch hazel water to the skin may help to temporarily relieve itching, discomfort, irritation, and burning from hemorrhoids and other anal disorders. And don't you dare try that with rubbing alcohol. You'll regret it for the rest of your life. Trust me on that one. Four, witch hazel can alleviate scalp sensitivity. Witch hazel may help reduce scalp irritation and inflammation. There have even been a few studies to show it having some effect on dandruff and scalp dryness. However, some head and shoulders or Denerac shampoo will usually work better in these cases. Number five, witch hazel may help some fight acne. Witch hazel acts as an astringent to help shrink your pores, smooth your skin, and reduce inflammation. In my experience, this works for some, but not for all. So this is one that you'll have to try for yourself. Number six, witch hazel can stop minor bleeding. Applying witch hazel, bark or leaf or water to the skin can reduce minor bleeding. Its astringent properties allow it to slow down bleeding from small minor cuts, even for some people on blood thinners, which is a great because who wants to call their doctor because they got a paper cut that won't stop bleeding because that's just absolutely ridiculous. And while witch hazel may be great to try for all these benefits we just went over, there are a few things that people have been using witch hazel for that might be leaving them let down. Witch hazel is probably not the most effective for people with eczema. In one trial, people with mild eczema using witch hazel for 14 days and they compared it people using low dose of hydrocortisone cream and found it wasn't comparable. Hydrocortisone cream worked way better. I'd like to add a pharmacist pro tip in right here. If you have eczema or you've been using witch hazel with some success, there's no reason to stop because it's not going to make your eczema worse. And just because it doesn't work for most people, if you're getting results, just keep using it. It's not gonna make anything worse. And that goes for most things, as long as they're not dangerous. Witch hazel has also been touted as being great on sore throats. 
but all the trials that they've done in this realm usually show no benefit, so I'd stick to a cough drop or tea and honey. Okay, before we get into how witch hazel differs from alcohol and peroxide, let's take a look at how to use it properly. If you've been reading about or interested in some of its oral benefits, the oral dosing is three to four teaspoons, 15 to 20 mils of witch hazel per day. This is generally considered safe. However, if you ingest more than that amount, it may cause stomach irritation and vomiting in some people. Witch hazel can be applied topically to the skin several times per day without any adverse consequences. So if you find that it's working for you, feel free to use it three to four times per day on intact skin or minor cuts. Most people find it easiest to just pour it directly on the area that they're trying to treat, but putting it on a cotton ball or a piece of cloth and applying it that way works well also. If you suffer from hemorrhoids or any other anal disorders, then witch hazel may be your saving grace. What I found with my patients is this is what it works best on for itching and discomfort associated with hemorrhoids and other anal disorders. Witch hazel has been applied up to six times per day or after every bowel movement and suppositories have been placed in the anus one to three times per day and it works great for many, many patients. So if you're suffering from hemorrhoids or any other anal disorder, I highly recommend giving it a shot. It's inexpensive and it may be effective for you. All right, now that you know how to use your witch hazel, let's answer some commonly asked questions and compare witch hazel to rubbing alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. Witch hazel is a plant extract. This made with water via distillation process, it's soothing to the skin and mildly astringent, meaning it causes the contraction of skin cells and other body tissues. Hydrogen peroxide is made through an industrial process. It's a bleach and an oxidizer, and sometimes a disinfectant and a strong concentrations. It can be used as rocket fuel. It's quite unstable and decomposes when exposed to light, which is why it's sold in those dark, non-transparent bottles. Rubbing alcohol is also made using an industrial process and is highly volatile, flammable, and is often used as a solvent for other industrial processes. So now that we know the basic difference between the three, let's take a look at some commonly asked questions on where some should be used and others should not. Does witch hazel disinfect surfaces? While many times you see witch hazel being used in sanitation products, it does not actually sanitize surfaces or your skin and you shouldn't buy it with that in mind. So it absolutely can't replace rubbing alcohol in that aspect. I've read that witch hazel can kill viruses. Does that mean it works against COVID? I know that we're all in search of a non-chemical cleaner that we can use in our house during this pandemic. But witch hazel is not the right choice. You're going to get the results you're looking for from 70% or greater rubbing alcohol and also bleach. There are other few cleaners that can kill COVID and other viruses, but these two are the most available, so stick with one of them to be safe. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is that witch hazel is an excellent astringent. It tightens and firm skin, and you probably should be mostly using it as a cosmetic enhancer because it's amazing astringent properties. However, you should pass on witch hazel if you're looking for antiseptic that can kill bacteria and viruses. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos each and every week to help all of us stay in the best health possible. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay curious. And as always, have a beautiful day.